coming out this week. Thank you guys for coming out today and showing your support for my brother and um, the other people that, that we talked about today. Um, ultimately, my family wants answers and we want to show that we're not going to be bullied out of getting them. Um, as you can tell, I'm already getting teary, so I'm not going to read what I prepared. Um, but I have a, a fellow Kuyala that's going to read for me. Thank you, Elsa. coming out here today it shows great character for you to take time out of your day to support other people so I thank you and I'm here to support my girl and her family so I'm gonna read these words directly from her and uh, hope I can do a good job for her I had finished cooking for a potluck and put my son to bed I decided to check my Facebook one more time before bed it was a new message. It was Denzel, a close friend of Dominic's, concerned that he hasn't seen him and that he might not and that he may have been a victim in a recent police shooting. Then the videos. They come in. There's an officer performing chest compressions, but there isn't any movement. I tortured myself with the footage, trying to convince myself that the person looked a few pounds heavier than Dominic. Start calling everywhere you would think to call when you think your loved one's been hurt. And Rhode Island Hospital was all I had to go off of. Denzel accompanied me to the hospital. The person involved in the shooting was pronounced dead and now with the state medical examiner. The doctor didn't have a name or much to share except that from the gunshot wounds, the victim appeared to be running away and had various tattoos and was wearing two pairs of socks. My heart dropped. I thought to myself, Noni always wears two pairs of socks. In the movies, they play it out that you get a dreadful knock in the middle of the night and know something is wrong when there are blue uniforms at your door. For my parents, I was that dreadful knock at their door in the middle of the night. After countless calls and visits to the police station, the detective we'd been waiting for was in the next morning and coldly confirmed that it was Dominic, my brother, who was shot and killed. I remember a kind clerk working at the station offered her condolences. The mayor, police commissioner, and police chief didn't meet with my family until almost a month later, and their visit felt like it was prompted by public scrutiny or as the mayor called it, poor communication. Officer Julianne Borsari was cleared within a few weeks of Noni being killed and never charged. My family is still left with questions. The answer to these questions we feel have been deliberately withheld from the Pawtucket Police Department, leaving us in the dark for years. We waited almost three years for an autopsy report of the medical examiner who refused to supply it until the hearing from the Attorney General, excuse me, until there was an investigation, until there was no open investigation. But there was a, the grand jury had already cleared Officer Borzi, so why couldn't we get the report? It was unavailable and only given it to us when the city was ordered to by the Attorney General in a Public Records Act request, and the report remained largely redacted. My brother and I were born and raised in Pawtucket. He loved music, he loved playing basketball, and at the young age of 24, was still finding himself in this world. My son's memories of his uncle are mostly ones that we tell him, and not the ones they built together, and that's never gonna change. But what we can change is my family not having answers to the questions the city of Pawtucket refused to give us us. And we can change the landscape for what policing looks like for the future of our neighborhoods, where our kids play and the conversations that we have at
as parents with our children about how they should interact with police. They may have slowed us down and even discouraged us from thinking that knowing the truth was possible. But we're not slowing down anymore and we're not gonna stop.